Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob with me Rob Bidolf. Do you see another picture of me? Oh there's me and Ringo disguised as monsters. That's because this is the Draw with Rob Monster Madness book full of monstery puzzles and draw alongs and all that sort of stuff. Check it out if you haven't seen it. So I am a children's author and illustrator. You might have seen some of my picture books before. This one here was my second picture book. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. Um, this one is called Gurra, as you can see. It's all about a bear here, a gold medal winning bear Ooh, called Fred, who one day loses his growl, which is a problem when one of the competitions in the bear Olympics, basically, is the loud growl. And on the day of the competition, he loses his growl. So you have to buy that book and see what happens and why he's lost his growl. I think it might have something to do with this bear here, whose name is Boris. This is my latest picture book, The Blue Footed Booby. And here it is in paperback. As you can see, it says, can you follow the footprints and solve the mystery? It's all about some red-footed baker boobies. Oh, I nearly showed you the end of the story then. Oh dear, spoiler alert. But you can see, it's a fun book. Not many colors in this book actually, it's quite different for me. I like that page, massive blue feet. This is my first ever chapter. Well actually, that's not my first chapter book. I'm just going back here to see if I can find my first ever chapter book. Here it is. This is my first one. Oh, this I believe. I'm not sure, I think this might be the uh, Spanish version of it. But it's called Peanut Jones. In English it's called Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City. This obviously, is this a Spanish version? I don't know now. Yes, I think it is Spanish, it might be Catalan. Um, but this was my first ever chapter book called Peanut Jones. And this is the second in the series called Peanut Jones and the Twelve Portals. So if you like reading fun adventure stories involving magic pencils and strange cities that are entirely illustrated, then you might like this book. Full of drawings, not too difficult, short chapters, super, super fun. Check that one out. But we are here today to do a little drawing together. Is that in the middle? That's pretty straight to me and in the middle. And I'm excited about this one because today I am going to show you guys how to draw a pangolin. Now, some of you might not have heard of a pangolin before. I don't think I'd heard of a pangolin, pangolin until I went to university and I met uh, one of my best friends in the world whose name is Phil Corbett and he is also a children's author and illustrator too. You need to check out his Kitty Quest books, they are so good. But when I, so I went to university with Phil, we were studying, um, uh, well I was studying kind of graphic design by then, he was studying animation and he told me all about pangolins. He's, he had a really cute little pangolin character and ever since then I have loved these guys. So what are pangolins? Well, they're, they're little mammals, okay? They're not, they're not hugely big, they're kind of, I don't know, about the size of a dog, something like that. Uh, and they live, they're mainly found in Africa and Asia. And they are honestly Google pangolin. They're the most amazing looking creatures. They look like they're covered in kind of armor, like armor plates. <laughs> they're entirely covered in, I think it, they're made of keratin, these kind of armor plates. And they are amazing looking animals. And the reason they're covered in armor plates, it kind of protects them. And so what happens is if one of their predators approaches, they roll up into these like balls, a bit like hedgehogs, and they're kind of like covered. They're totally like these balls, these armor plated balls, and nobody can actually get to them to hurt them. So they're very, very clever. And they're like a bit like anteaters. They've got these huge long tongues. Their tongues are longer than their bodies. And that's because they eat ants. They have to get their tongues into the little ant holes to eat them. They eat something like 20,000 ants a day. But I love them, they are so cute looking. And pangolin, the name pangolin actually means roller because they roll up into their balls. So I thought I would show you guys how to draw a pangolin kind of roll, half rolled up into his ball, okay? Sound like fun? Trust me, it's gonna be really fun. We're gonna make it look really, really cute. Right, I'm gonna explain how Draw With Rob works in case you've never done it before. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little drawing together. And I'm gonna break this drawing down into bite-sized pieces. Because lots of people tell me they don't think they can draw. But actually, when you break a drawing down into simple shapes, a line here, a circle there, a rectangle there, it just goes to show that anybody can draw. Drawing is actually easy. Some people just need a bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in, which obviously is where I come in. Because I'm gonna help you with that. So I will draw a bit here, 
You will pause the video, you can copy me, then I'll draw a bit more, then you will draw, I will draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, and at the end, you're gonna have a really cute picture of a pangolin that you're gonna be super proud of. Okay, so grab yourself a pen, grab yourself a piece of paper, a pencil will do, absolutely fine. You might want some colored pencils or colored felt tips, something later on to color in your drawing, that's gonna be fun. Um, and that's it, we're ready to go. Now, I'm gonna start this drawing in a slightly unusual way, because I'm gonna grab a pencil, here's my pencil, and I'm gonna grab a roll of tape, because I'm gonna cheat a bit. Because we are gonna draw, as I said, we're gonna draw this pangolin kind of rolled up into a ball. And so we need a nice circle. Now, circles, I do like drawing circles freehand myself, but in this instance, I'm gonna use this roll of tape to help me draw a perfect circle. So what I want you to do at about, um, imagine this is the face of a clock. So this is 12 o'clock, this is six o'clock, this is three o'clock, this is nine o'clock. I want you to start drawing around your thing. You can use a piece of, a roll of tape like this or maybe a small plate, something like that. Anything circle you can find, you can use as your template. If you want to draw your own circle, that is absolutely fine too. I'm just cheating a little bit today. So what I want you to do, I want you to start at about eight o'clock and I want you to just to draw around your piece of tape all the way around till you get to about seven o'clock and then we're gonna stop, okay? So if I take that away, you can see I have drawn a circle but I've left a little gap down here in the bottom left corner. And this is gonna be the template for our little pangolin. So the reason I did that in pencil is because I'm gonna rub that out afterwards because now I'm gonna go to my pen and I'm gonna start drawing in pen. And I'm gonna use this pencil circle just to as a little guide for the rest of my drawing. You will see what I mean. So the first thing I want you to do, I want you to go to this end of the circle at, what do we say, eight o'clock, right? And I want you just to draw a little line coming out diagonally, a couple of centimeters long, like that, okay? Just from the end of your little bit of circle. Then we're gonna curve around and we're gonna come back in, like that. So far, so good, right? Then what I want you to do, we're gonna go up in a curve. So we're keeping it in a nice, smooth, kind of curvy shape. And then we're gonna join up with our circle up here. Okay, so we've done a little whoop sticking out of our circle. Then what I want you to do is we're gonna go into our circle and we're gonna do another curve like that. Then next to that, we are gonna do another curve about the same size. Sort of like semicircles really, aren't they? And then guess what, we're gonna do one more. We're gonna come up and we're gonna go around, but this time we're gonna take it back to join up with that initial line we made so it's a funny little shape like that that just eats a bit into our circle and now this is where our little circle template is going to come in because the next thing I want you to do I just want you to follow your pencil line all the way around as neatly as you can I'm trying not to smudge it with my left hand so I'm just shifting my hand position you can see my line is not perfectly smooth. Because I'm using a brush pen, you get little bits that kind of stick out, but that's what I like. I like it when your line is full of texture and personality. It just adds to the whole texture of your drawing. I'm gonna make it a bit thicker up here. But it's sort of the same thickness all the way around. And actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just come back across here like that. blend it into my original shape that I drew. Okay, that is the first part of our pangolin drawing. Now, as I said, they're covered in these amazing scales, which is sort of their armor to protect them against predators, okay? So we are now gonna draw all these scales. Now this is gonna be our pangolin's nose here. Okay, we're gonna do the little eye, but this is our pangolin's body that is kind of curled up. 
and we, it is t entirely made of these scales. Now we started the scales here at the edge of our pangolin's head and we're gonna carry on adding them around. So what I want you to do is more of these U shapes. It's gonna be a little bit bigger this time. Not U shapes, sort of upside down U shapes, aren't they? But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another three like that, but this time, it's just gonna be a bit bigger than the first ones we did. And they're just gonna tuck behind our little pangolin's head there, okay? And it's sort of rotating as we go. We're gonna do another set now. Again, these kind of upside down U shapes, like this, coming around. Can you see, I'm just slightly rotating. We'll do four this time. I'm just gonna come around and just disappear in behind that. So it's kind of following the shape of our pangolin's body as it rotates around. Now this one's gonna be tricky. I'm gonna start this here, like that. Keeping those curvy shapes in like that. This one I'm just gonna disappear behind there. So can you see it's sort of rotating around. Now you can do as many or as few as you want. I mean, it might be quite a good idea to kind of try and copy mine as best you can because it's very easy to kind of lose track of where you are in these drawings. Now this time I'm gonna start here because we're gonna get, we need to get thinner towards the end. So I want this to start getting nice and thin here. So I'm gonna start about there and I'm gonna do my shapes like this. So we've got a bit of a gap there, which we can fill with a couple more maybe in a minute. But then we're gonna start getting straighter again and smaller with three little U's. Sideways U's, then we're gonna do two. And then finally, we're gonna come up towards the end of our little circle. And we'll just tip it off with three tiny ones, like that. Looks a bit like a foot, but that's not a foot. That is the end of our pangolin's tail. It's not actually quite the end, because what we're then gonna do, on the end of that, we're gonna do a kind of a little pointy bit, because they have pointy bits on the end of their tails. So can you see what I've done there? I've kind of made all these scales kind of go around. Now here, let me see. I'm just gonna, I think, now I'm, I'm sort of not sure whether to do this, I don't wanna ruin it, but I am gonna add just another couple in there. Do one there and one there. And I don't want to overdo it, but that's about right, I think. Just add a couple more scales in there. And that kind of looks like our pangolin is made of these funny plates. I mean, you really do need to Google one of these things to sort of know what they look like. They are in honestly incredible looking things. We have, I think their plates are actually a bit more pointed, but I've just simplified them by making them curvy like that. And can you see, so that original circle we drew has really, really kind of helped us out, hasn't it, in this drawing. And it's all been covered over with pen, apart from this bit. So I'm just gonna, I know I usually don't say rub anything out, but actually when it's a guideline like this, we can rub it out because it's done its job now. It's not, we're not rubbing it out because it was a mistake. We're rubbing it out because it's kind of finished doing its job. Oh, I just smudged it, brilliant. Well done, Rob. Good job. <laughs> um, right, next, we need to start adding some personality to our pangolin. So the first thing that I want you to do, we're gonna add a nice big eye. We're gonna make our pangolin lovely and cute. So in this space here, I want you to draw a lovely big circle like that for our pangolin's eye. Inside that eye, we're gonna draw another circle. I'm gonna add a little bit of shininess to our pangolin's eye. So what we do, we just draw a tiny circle inside that circle up towards the left that we then color around. It just gives our pangolin's eye a little bit of shininess, okay. Now this is our pangolin's nose. Remember I said they've got quite pointy noses and they have really long tongues. We're not gonna draw the tongue today. The tongue is safely tucked away inside our pangolin's mouth. But we are gonna draw a little nose. So what I want you to do is just a little sort of quarter circle shape up there. Like that, that's gonna be our pangolin's nose. You know how I always draw nostrils, can you remember? Little swirly whirly bits. Let's just add a tiny little nostril. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see that properly a tiny little nostril and let's give our pangolin a little smiley mouth like that oh cute this is very cute 
Now I am going to add an eyebrow, but I'm going to do that after we've coloured in our little pangolin. Okay. Now we need to give our pangolin some cute little paws. So this is how we're going to do it. From let's do it from here. So like the third row of scales, I want you to draw just a little line coming out, straight line coming out about a centimetre or two, like that. Okay. Then. We're going to come down towards the end of the tail and then we're going to curve up and disappear into the little head like so then next to that in here we're going to draw another curve that matches that one we just drew like that and then if i just draw three little lines one two three one two three can you see there are pangolins little kind of paws? I don't know if they're called paws. They've got very sharp claws actually because pangolins are diggers. They dig these great big sort of caves and holes that they live in. I think they're digging big enough that humans can get in and that's how big they are. So there we go, there's the front paws. Now because it's sort of curling up into a ball, we need to draw its rear paws. And we're gonna do its rear paws coming out of here, like this, a sort of, it's sort of going up slightly like that because he's kind of curling up we need to make them nice and cute so we're going to do a shape like that and it disappears into the bodies like that and we do the real one sort of just echoing that shape we just drew like that curling up let's add some little claws here one two three one two three oh that is so cute and that is basically our curled up little pangolin. Cute, isn't it? Now they are, you know what, pangolins, I found out when I was doing my research, because research, I, I, actually, I actually thought they were very similar to armadillos. Okay, you know armadillos. We haven't drawn one of those yet. I'm gonna do one of those at some point too, because they're really fascinating creatures too. But I thought they were very similar to armadillos and maybe anteaters, you know, because they eat ants, they've got the long tongue, the long nose. But actually, apparently, they're much closer related to cats and dogs than they are to armadillos and anteaters. Isn't that interesting? And they are also critically endangered. Apparently they're the most trafficked animal in the world. Traffic means they sort of get kidnapped and taken away by people for their scales and for their meat as well. So they are critically endangered. They're very, very rare. They're getting rarer. So we really, really need to help out pangolins, don't we? If you Google online, you can see how you can support the pangolin trust and that kind of thing to help protect these pangolins because they are beautiful beautiful creatures and it's a shame that they are being hunted by humans right i think it's time we colored in our pangolin you know what i'm going to say to you now don't you go crazy with your colors i mean there's a lot to do with the colors here we've got lots of scales you could even do each scale a different color if you wanted to make it a really beautiful rainbow colored pangolin i think i'm going to stick to the sort of the browns the brownie colors that actual pangolins are um and i'm going but i might do a bit of kind of a vignette a bit of ombre kind of stuff going on so you know fade from dark to light because i think that will really help accentuate how these scales look so i'm going to go into super speed mode to color in my little pangolin so I will see you back here in about 20 or 30 seconds with a beautifully colored pangolin, okay? So here we go, three, two, one, let's do this. There is my coloured in pangolin. Now, that was quite a tricky one to colour in. I don't know if you noticed, but I was doing a lot of this. I was rotating my drawing around as I coloured because I was really worried about smudging. And so it was easier to do these bits. And I sort of like doing them in the direction that the plates go. So I didn't want to take any chances. So I was doing lots of kind of rotating. Quite often I try and keep the page still so you can see the colour appear. But this time you will have seen when that super speed Lots of kind of woo, twirling around. But I'm really pleased with how it's come out. So let me just talk through what I did. So remember I said I was gonna sort of do these gradients, this sort of ombre effect, going from dark 
to light at the tips of each scale. And what that does, it helps to accentuate the kind of the layers of the tip, the fact that all these, uh, the layers of the plate, sorry. So the, the fact that all of these plates are kind of on top of each other, it really helps. Because when you do the dark colors behind these ones here, it sort of brings this, by doing the dark color in there, it brings this plate, set of plates forward. So you really get this, this, this kind of idea that they're kind of layered on top of each other and each one's kind of like piled on top of the next one it really helps as well as just looking really nice i think whenever you do a nice blend so i've done from sort of mid brown through orange to kind of yellow right at the very tip in fact i've just noticed i've missed a bit there it's quite difficult because i don't want my yellow pencil to see this picked up a bit of the gray there see i wish i hadn't done that now Never mind, we keep going. But yes, yeah, so it goes from mid brown through orange, sort of to a golden color, to yellow right at the tip. And I've tried to kind of blend it all the way through. And then I've had some very, added some very, very dark brown right in behind each set of plates and sort of down at the tip of the nose. And again, with the little feet and the paws, I've added sort of dark where they meet the plates just to make them sort of recede very slightly. And you end up with this rather lovely effect but you know what you know what you don't have to do that you can just color yours totally flat or you can't you maybe you've done yours already and you've done it all flat and lots of lovely different colors there's lots and lots of ways to color in and i sometimes i just really like the coloring process because usually it's the last bit of the picture and it's what makes everything kind of come together right i'm going to add an eyebrow do you remember i said i was going to add, add an eyebrow because eyebrows as we all know hang on let me just go over this little swirly whirly nostril and nose and mouth Eyebrows are what really help to give your character a bit of emotion. So I'm gonna add a nice eyebrow, quite a long way above the eye. Because our pangolin is a very friendly pangolin. There we go, a little bit of curve and character. Oh, the perfect finishing touch for our pangolin drawing. Right, the last thing you need to do, I'm not gonna add any background. I really like this quite graphic drawing that circle do, do you see the sort of the invisible circle that very first thing we did is really really obviously there now and it just makes the drawing kind of kind of pleasing on the eye i think because it's a very graphic drawing this it's almost like a logo it's almost like a pangolin logo isn't it <laughs> and i really really like that one so i'm going to sign my drawing here do it down away from the face we'll do a full signature today Ooh, get off there we go I'm proud of this one. I want everyone to know that I've done it. You should do the same. Make sure your name is nice and clear at the bottom. And there we go. That's how you draw a little curled up pangolin. Now, obviously, I want to see your drawings. How do I see your drawings? Well, it's easy. What you do, you get a grown up to take a picture of your drawing with their phone. Okay, then they can post it on social media using this hashtag. Draw with Rob. That way I'll get to see it if you post it with that hashtag on Instagram or Twitter. If you're watching on Facebook, you can just comment below this post with your drawings. I'll get to see those that way too. Um, and there you go. I can't wait to see your drawings. I think I'm gonna get a really good, I know my. I know that my Draw With Rob fans are brilliant artists. You know, they are all, even the ones who tell me they can't draw, they can draw, they're really good. And I love seeing your drawings. They're always so full of character and personality and beautifully colored, obviously as well. So I'm really excited about seeing your drawings. Who knows, maybe your drawing will make the grid. Um, so do, don't forget to send me them. Also, what else can I tell you? Subscribe, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to my channel, turn your notifications on. If you're not already subscribed to my newsletter, you should go and sign up to my newsletter because that way you get all that, it's totally free, no spam, nothing like that, but you get all the latest news from me when a new video is coming out, when a new book is coming out, when I'm going on tour. I might be appearing live on stage near you. You can come along and see my show and then get to meet me afterwards. Show me your drawings, I'll sign your books, that kind of thing. Sign up to the newsletter, you'll be the first to hear about all that sort of stuff. And that's about it, I think. Um, I'm going to be back very, very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, guys, I want you to keep those pencils sharpened. I want you to keep on drawing. Make up your own characters. You can take what you've learned from my videos and design your own characters and your own animal drawings, that kind of thing. Um, I want you to keep on reading. Reading is so important. Children who read are the ones 
that achieve their full potential in life. So reading is very important. Get mum and dad to give you a bedtime story. That's the key, the bedtime story. But as I said, I'll be back very soon. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and I will see you soon for another episode of Draw With Rob. Bye everyone. Hello everyone, just when you thought you got rid of me, here I am again popping up at the end of your video to annoy you <laughs> and I'm here today to tell you all about this, the brand new Draw With Rob activity book and it's called Amazing Animals and that's because it's full of loads of amazing animals. It's true, it really is. We've got little ones like this guy here, we have got whew, some really big ones, we have got animals that live in the sea. We have got animals that spend most of their time up in the sky. And of course, there's loads and loads of really, really cute ones. <laughs> um, what's in the book, I hear you ask? Well, we have got loads and loads of really cool and quite tricky puzzles for you to do. Uh, we've got some pages where I start the drawings off and you guys get to finish them. We have got lots of really, really nice colouring pages for you to do too. And of course, it wouldn't be a Draw With Rob book without lots of exclusive, never before seen draw alongs. And I've got the frames as per usual for you to put the pictures in. And of course, all the pages are perforated. So once you've done your beautiful works of art, you can tear them out and stick them up on the wall and display them for all to see. And then when you get to the end of your book, look, We've got a really cool certificate. You put your name in there and it says, this is to certify that your name is officially an amazing animal artist. Isn't that cool? The book is out right now. You can get it right now from wherever you get your books, be it online or from your local bookshop, local bookshop, if you can, please. It was so much fun to put this book together. I really, really loved doing it. I really, really hope you love the book too. I think if you like these videos, I think you're gonna love this book, to be honest. So get yourself a copy. If you do, let me know what you think of it. Right, I better let you go. You gotta get on with your day, haven't you? I'm gonna be back very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, everybody, keep those pencils sharpened, keep on drawing, keep on reading, and take care. Bye-bye.